But now on to the ladies' tour of Norway, stage one from Halden to Sarpsborg, 141.5 kilometers long. Rolling parkour, we have a climbs of 1k 5%, 1.7k is 3.5%, a nasty uphill drag to the finish. It finished quite late this race, but a strong start list in case you don't know. Obviously, Annemiek van Vleuten's here. She's also wearing the uh, couldn't find her Benji. I don't realize she's in the Women's World Tour Leaders jersey. Uh, <laughs> quick women, we have Chloe Hosking, Lippert, Rivera, and uh, I think SD Works sent their, you know, they're giving Neve Fisher Black and Mulman a chance at leadership. Who else is quick that I'm missing out? Uh, Kjart Konsani, Valka were pacing a bit today. But yeah, uh, Ludwig Cavalli, I should mention as well, as well as Mavi Garcia and Sarah Roy, the quick women for a stage like today. We had a break, Benji, and I don't know that Christian Kirsten Faulkner on Team Tibco SVB, which I think is Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, yep. Christian Faulkner was, I think, uh, worked in maybe corporate finance or investment banking in in uh, California. But yeah, she's now racing for them. She was in the break with uh, some other strong riders. Yeah, definitely. Jorgensen, Baisman, Van der Koek, and Christian and. Those riders stayed up quite a while because, well, it was an odd situation watching this race. We started watching with a break of five and first of all, there was no kilometers to go on the screen at that point for like the first 30 minutes of me watching this race and we had no time gaps. So we were waiting, 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 waiting until at the front of the breakaway, there was this guy with a whiteboard on a motorbike saying the gap was two minutes 20. Fortunately, we knew what the gap was then and this was... Ah, still 60k to go or something and the gap kept expanding to 3 minutes 30 with 40k to go and then finally the gap started slowing down well slow closing down that's the correct term <laughs> slowing down is not what i'm looking for here and the peloton started coming closer and closer did you have any view on who was setting up any tempo in, in the group behind well i thought you know DSN, they got two women for their finish that I really liked in Lippert and Corinne Rivera. But then there's also, they have the Norwegian Suzanne Anderson. She's also fast. She's 23 years old. And, you know, she's 23. She came seventh at World Champs in 2017. But, yeah, she never won, but she, she is fast. And she's done well at racing last, uh, last month. So maybe I didn't really know who they were going for. I just thought DSM would be very active. And they weren't actually so active uh, particularly in the latter portion of this race, chasing back. They, the group had split a little bit. Faulkner had gone clear. She's holding 30 seconds, although the gap, like, it, it was 30 seconds at 6Ks that then yeah. we saw the right, like, we actually saw a visual uh, shot of how close she was. And I was like, that's 10 seconds. It actually was 10 seconds. Valkar are pacing really hard. DSM have four riders in the group. I think Hosking had been dropped, so she yep. Trek went pacing. And it was just Valkar, all Valkar pacing. I was like, what are the other teams doing? Like, why is no one chasing Faulkner? And yeah, like, do you have an explanation for it, Benji? Because I didn't, I didn't really have one. Not really. We had a crash earlier in the race, but on paper, DSM, they'd have the numbers and they look to be having the numbers because they had suddenly five riders in a row with... I don't know, was it four kilometers to go or something when the gap was 25 seconds, 20 seconds? And, well, they came to the front one second and then the first rider dropped back and then the other riders had to go around and then they went into a corner where half the peloton basically went down or at least split up because of a crash of 10 riders roughly in a corner. And that put the entire race into full chaos, honestly. Like, Faulkner still had a proper gap of... 15 seconds at that point and this was what 2.5 kilometers to go two kilometers to go so they have to start closing that down quickly and still volcar had i think gasparini riding and i think that was going on for san Ginetti for uh for the sprint of her and she kept on pacing that she kept on pacing that that volcar rider really well done today how she's ridden and she goes off the front and they kind of just look at each other they don't go to the front and it's the Australian champion sitting at the front, pacing a bit, but it's it's not like it's not gonna be top tempo, of course. And like Faulkner, she keeps on hammering it, and then we arrive at around four hundred meters to go. And I'm gonna let you lead that lead that in. Well, Faulkner hadn't really looked behind at all. It looks like she's cycling in mud. It's like this uphill drag, but <laughs> no one's really leading out anybody except I think uh, Juliette Labou and Florchi Mackay. 
they seem to have been saving themselves to do a, an actual proper traditional lead out for, I thought it was going to be Lippert or Robert. It was actually Suzanne Anderson, as I mentioned. She kicks out of the group. She almost drops her chain as she shifts. You can see she nearly goes to the side. Luckily, there was no crashes. Sprinting after Faulkner, but Faulkner beats her on the line with Anderson coming second. Canyon Shram had paced a fair bit as well. I think they'd done their best in third for Alice Barnes. Cecilia Utrup Ludwig fourth, which shows maybe quite a hard finish, although she has been quick actually in the last three months. Femke Markus, Lucinda Brand van Vleuten, five, six, seven, then Roxanne Fournier, Barbara, Barbara Guarishi, and Sofia Bertizzolo rounding out the top 10. So just a weird finish where teams weren't really willing to take control. It reminded me a lot of Hant Vavelham when Elisa Longa Borghini was clear and she was like literally dangling at 10 seconds until the last 300 metres until eventually Jumbo Visma did a huge push. Then no one really had the team to do that here. Maybe the really late crash in that right-hand corner took out some important domestiques. I don't know. And when I look through the finish, I think Lippert and Rivera were quite a way back. Uh, the problem as well with the bike exchange, Sarah Roy, who Benji mentioned, she's their sprinter, so she really didn't seem to have anyone to lead her out at all. So a bit of, I don't know, maybe underestimating Kristen Faulkner, maybe not knowing the time gaps, most likely just a lack of domestiques on a bit of a hard circuit at the end. But Benji, you got some stats on Team Tibco SVB, who are not Women's World Tour yet. I think uh, you saw some stuff on Twitter about their team. Yeah, credits to Matthew Mitchell, a guy that posts a lot about women's cycling content. And he mentioned that this is actually uh, their first World Tour win since 2018, which is a while, and their second ever. So this is a team that is going to be very happy with a victory like this. And I'm pretty sure you had a number about DSM as well floating around where it's very, very limited when it comes to World Tour races, right? Well, zero World Tour wins this year for DSM <laughs> <Very limited. laughs> because Giro Rosa is not a World Tour race yeah. anymore. They did get a win there with Rivera. They have 11 wins, 10 are from Lorena Vibes, So, or Lorena Vibes. Um, She is just a win factory. <laughs> he was like, she is out and out the best women's sprinter. And, but yeah, they've only got one outside of her despite having Florchi Mackay, Rivera, Lippert. Um and yeah, they were just missing that today. And Suzanne Anderson denied a win. I don't think she's ever won a race, but she was certainly the strongest today. Yeah. Tomorrow's uh, oh sorry, go on, Benji. I think when it comes to like DSM, there's a lot of going on in in the media these days with first of all in the men's team with all the riders leaving and so forth. And there being interviews with the likes of a Kemna, not the rider, but the person from DSM. Yeah, I know it's pretty difficult because he also wrote there, Kemna. But um, And also, I think Matt Winston, there he is, and they keep talking about cooperation and stuff. So I, I had a bit of a, a giggle when I saw that they weren't cooperating properly before the crash to, uh, to catch this breakaway, to be honest. I think the women's DSM team, from what I've seen, they seem to have pretty good chemistry. Lip, Lip and Rivera seem to get on really, really well. So I don't, I don't really know how it works, whether they two teams, men and women teams, share the same management or whatever, but... Yeah, I mean, if, if you, as an aside, want to check out these interviews, uh, they're pretty hilarious. They're about the men's team, though. Um, I think a significant lack of self-reflection. But tomorrow's stage, stage two from Askim to Meissen, 145 Ks. They do a lap of the finish line first and then go and do another 8 Ks. There's some 1 K, 6.2% climbs. But in the last 8 Ks, there is this rise of, looks like about a kilometre, kilometre and a half climb at, Decent gradient. Is that a place for someone like Van Vloyen to attack? Probably not. Probably not long and steep enough. So break has a decent chance, particularly if domestiques get dropped once again. And I'll be interested to see who wins. I think, yeah, I think Rivera will be the quickest if she, uh, but it's whether she, um, if they can bring back the break. Do you have a pick, Benji, or you don't know what's going to happen? Well, I, I feel like it's most likely going to be a sprint. Do you think that somebody would dare to go on that tiny hill before the end? I mean, no, not really, to be honest. Like if they I should was... be able to control it, right? But it, it is, like, decent. Like, I would love to see someone try, at least. There's no Elisa Longo Borghini style here to, or SD Works to do it. I think uh, if I'm FDJ, I'll just pace for Cavalli for the sprint. If yeah. SD Works is the team to do it who don't have an out-and-out -out sprinter. they got strong riders but no nailed-on sprinter. And Trek will be hoping that 
uh, Hosking can get over that hill, and they got Brand to play if she can't. But anyway, stay tuned for our recaps of Polonia, Ladies Tour of Norway tomorrow. And uh, we'll, thanks all for supporting the podcast, and we'll see you with all of that for your Friday entertainment tomorrow. Ciao.